हेलो एवरी वन आई होप यू आर फाइन इन डूइंग ग्रेट वेलकम टू वेरी एक्साइटिंग कोर्स दिस कोर्स इज अबाउट लर्निंग एज साइप्रेस सो आई विल यूज साइप्रेस एज ए वहीकल टू ड्राइव अवर टेस्ट ऑटोमेशन एफर्ट सो इन दिस कोर्स आई विल जज योर नॉलेज बाई बिगिंग टू क्विजिज सो यू शुड अटैम्प्ट दीज टू क्विजिज क्विज वन एंड क्विज टू एट द एंड please provide your feedback how this was this was course and how it helped you if you like it then please share your feedback and see you in the course hi everyone welcome to another exciting course this course is about test automation by using cypress i will use cypress as a tool for our test automation so welcome you again and now let's get started before jumping and exploring the cypress let's some build some foundations to discuss why we need to automate and some uh, test uh, automation test pyramid and we'll discuss about testing coordinates uh, where the testing lies in which quadrant and so on so let's begin with testing about why we need to automate there are many reasons to automate so i have listed few of them first one is manual testing takes two time so manual testing as humans do manual testing so it takes time to execute all the test cases if the application is big and time is short then it will take too much time so in some cases it is not possible to test each and everything suppose if one manual test uh, tester is there and there are one 500 test cases need to be executed as a reg regression suite and there are 1000 pages which need to be checked for broken links so uh, for manual testing to execute within one hour is impossible task so on the other hand if this task is automated then definitely automation is the best and it will it can execute secondly if it manual testers are error prone you know testing if manual testing when it take two time there is possibility that our manual manual testers are tired and they will skip some test cases so it reduces error prone testing task automation reduces error prone testing task third one which i have listed it it free up time to do best work when our testers are free definitely they will give the best results so automation saves our time and gives gives that time for manual testers to explore to do some interesting exploratory testing and and next one is safety net you know automation provides safety net we 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 have automation tests automation tests provide safety net and because they are run as they, they are run on each every Uh, on each every deployment or production side so they will follow the same path they will not be skipped so uh, our automation test is our safety net so it gives the confidence to our quality assurance team our project team and as a whole company as a whole and it also provides feedback early and often uh, automations can give feedback early if the, for example if there are unit tests definitely we can check if we're running the unit tests within within minutes we can check whether there is issue or not and then we if we have, we have automated api level tests if the way we have automated ui tests definitely we can catch the bugs before the client finds them and another one the test an example that drive coding can do more you know tests 
can do more than this because you know our our test automation scripts and our live documentation they, they provides our live documentations so we need to keep green we need to keep all our test pass so if there is any issue we need to fix it so definitely static page static documents for example uh, for example test plan test documents which are statics statically written on some uh, they are on some um, world document definitely it will be hard to update there but if our automation tests are not uh, not updated definitely they will fa fail we need to keep the green we need to keep all the test cases to pass so another very important point is return on investment definitely automation provide best return on investment it if it saves our time money effort and it gives our confidence definitely it will save our time investment effort but initially it will take time so there are some obstacles definitely all things which have i have discussed with you are good but there are some drawbacks which we need to consider while our doing automation strategy or our test automation planning the first one which is very important attitude attitude why should we automate as you know developers usually say that why we should automate ui level tests this is not our work so this is another issue uh, there is a initial effort which requires for example learning which initially if team is not trained on our automation we need to train the team initially there is hump there is a lot of effort, training investment in grammar money is required definitely then at the end it will go smooth and another one if our code is in flux if a code is changing it code is not stable Definitely, we cannot write the stable test cases, stable automation test scripts. If our test, our, our code is not stable, then how we can write the stable test cases, automation test cases on them? Another one issue is legacy code. If the code is not written, keeping in the mind of testability, then definitely that code is a other problem we need to consider it whether we can automate or not and other very important is you know a software engineering is human intensive task and there is humans are involved and usually they fear when something new is introduced in the company they fear whether well, we can do or not or they will fire why they have changed that strategy and so on so usually they stick onto their old habits. They don't want to jump into new things. So they are, if they are comfortable in their old work, they they will continue to do so. There are fears. We need to. We need to. We need to vanish those barriers. How we can do? Definitely, we can do with the help of management. Help. We can overcome these barriers through culture change, through whole team approach. In Scrum, we have whole team approach, whole team working on the problem. There should be team should be working together, and there should be a, a friendship culture. Definitely, we can overcome these barriers. hello everyone welcome to another section now in this sec section we will discuss about automation test pyramid as you can see we um, we have pyramid on right hand side and then we have inverted pyramid on left hand side in the right hand side you can see we have unit tests first of all we will do unit tests definitely then 
then comes to integration test api test the end to end test and ui level test then will gives the product to our client now let's see if we have automated 20 percent of unit tests then we have left only with 30 percent and 20 percent are automated api level tests integration tests are automated as 20 percent then we will left 10 percent 10% mean we have 10% automated tests, we have 10% work left. Then definitely at, at the end we have small chunks of tests to be executed to see. So in this case at the end we, we don't have any workload, huge workload, pressure, time pressure and so on. So you can see this is ideal situation. We need to achieve that. We need to achieve that situation. We definitely, we should focus on unit level, then definitely we will move upward. But unfortunately, the strategy which is followed currently in most of the com company around the world is, on, you can see this on, on my left hand side. Here you can see we only do 10% automated testing unit level automated testing we if we follow that path initially we will skip then definitely at the end we, the burden will be on our shoulder uh, if we automate 20 percent integration test and we we left with the end to end test 70 percent and there will be huge chunk of workload manual testing automation testing definitely time time pressure so this approach is currently used and this this is the problem most of the software projects are failed they are out of budget they are they are out of their scope and so on so i want to emphasize you that initially when projects start we need to start automation start automation in this course my focus is on ui level test automation as a um, Cypress, I will use Cypress as a tool, as a vehicle to test, to do our, our test automation. So UI level, we will do test automation. We will not discuss about unit level tests. Although Cypress can, Cypress is the best tool which can do unit level testing, API testing and end to end. But in this course, my focus will be on UI level as test automation. As you, as you can see in this slide, there are testing quadrants. There are four quadrants. Quadrant one, in the first quadrant, we do unit tests, component tests. We usually developer does the unit tests. They automate in this testing. So in this quadrant, most of the work are related to developers. And then if developers have done some work, then second quadrant there is a functional test and uh, we need to type some do some story coding prototypes and these in quadrant two we can do both approaches automations and manual so we can do here manual testing and we can do some automation so my focus my as a cypress we will we will remain on quadrant two we will do functional tests here we will automate that and you can see these in this quadrant we are facing business we are doing business facing tests the test that affects the business on the other hand uh, quadrant one in quadrant four are technology facing tests they are towards the technology so in third quadrant we we usually do manual testing we can automate some of the tests there but we usually do manual testing we do exploratory testing scenario based testing usability testing user acceptance testing alpha and beta testing is done in this quadrant and fourth quadrant is performance load testing this is usually done by using tools as we cannot as one human being as a one person we cannot test you know, performance tests using 
thousand login people. So performance testing is done using tools, for example, JMeter and other. And security testing is done in this. In this we use tools for security testing there. So these are four coordinates we need to keep in mind. So if you have any question, you can ask me. I will be happy to answer this. So next we will discuss about Cypress. We will explore it further. Till then, bye. Hello everyone. And welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I will discuss I will discuss with you about the Cypress features. Cypress is open source, and you can do end-to-end uh, -end testing, integration testing, and unit testing. So Cypress uses JavaScript. You should know a little bit about JavaScript, so you can better code do coding in the Cypress. Anyhow, it is easy. You can start it if even you don't know about the JavaScript. Uh, in the in the website, you can find here they have website cypress.io. Here is their website. Uh, you can see cypress.io. The web has evolved. Finally, testing has to fast, easy, reliable testing for everything that runs in the browser they have given the download link you, you can download from here and and finally they have a features uh, section here they have listed features and you can see and you can view them there in their pricing their blogs for docs here you can see their documentations which is very for your testing so uh, other features their other features are uh, time travel here you can see they everything they run they take the screenshot and if there is any issue definitely we can easily debug we can view stakes we can find what the what was the issue and we have option to print on console and you can see request response DOM screenshots uh, so it is user friendly it has automatic weights so it automatically waits for command and session default value is 4 seconds so it provides consistent results as doesn't you as it is not using any any server or any there is no lacking it is fast consistent reliable as opposed to selenium because selenium uses web driver it also provides video screenshot uh, cross browser testing uh, you can do locally or uh, remotely by using ci cd pipeline these are some of the features which I have discussed. Definitely we will explore them further in our next sessions. Till then bye. Welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial I will discuss with you the Cypress project setup. How you can install the Node.js, Visual Studio Code and set up everything to run our tests. So first step is install Node.js because it supports javascript so for javascript we need node, node, node so in steps to we install the vue studio code vue studio code for coding the separates and then we'll create folder for separate project then i will open that folder into a vue studio code then I will run the command on terminal npm init hyphen y. Then I will install the Cypress and let's see. Uh, first of all, let me show you where you can download the node. Here you can see 
their website here you can see LTS recommended for most users if you are Windows users you can install if you are Mac users Mac or system installer and you can see most stable version is here LTS that's why it is recommended and uh, next for Visual Studio code you can code.visualstudio.com slash download here you can install for Windows if you are Windows on Windows you can install it supports Windows 7 8 10 11 and for Mac you can see you can download I have already downloaded let me show you here you can see npm minus hyphen hyphen v you can see I have install 8 version 8 is installed over and 8.1.0 install and for as you can see command has run again now let me show you if these steps are completed then you create a folder for Cypress project I have already created here you can see the folder Cypress demo here you can see the I have already uh, opened the, that folder and run the command here you can see the command was run on npm edit minus y and it has created the package package dot json with default values as you can change the values here you can see cypress demo was picked as a name version 1.0.0 description here you, you can write something in description demo project here you can click and save all hey you can see the scripts keywords and author uh, you can write the author and lessons isc so and now i'm going to say uh, here we have terminal you can here click on terminal new terminal is open and you can see here if we click on clear it will clear the text from terminal so in the next step uh, uh, we need to install the cypress so for installing cypress we need to npm install cypress let me show you npm npm click on enter so it will install the cypress on our current folder which is cypress underscore demo you can see it is installing it will take uh, some time so we need to wait As you can see it is giving some warnings so you can ignore these warnings you can move further mm. see it has created node modules node modules you can see there are so many things here packages on 
here you can see welcome to another tutorial in this tutorial we will write our first cypress test that's exciting so first of all in step one i will create a um, creative file js file dot js uh, in integration folder and then i will at that file i will mention the reference type is equal to cypress then step three i will write the test function and in that function i will write the code and then at the end i will run the test by using the command npx cypress open it will open the cypress runner and then i will run that then we'll discuss some of the building keywords elements so let's see first of all i need to go to uh, visual studio code and see here i need to let me show you the version which versions i am using npx cypress hyphen v here you can you will see the versions cypress versions build versions and so on now it is taking little bit time the system is little bit slow so just wait as you can see cypress package version which i am currently using is 9.1.1 and cypress binary version is 9.1.1 uh, electron by default cypress uses electron version which currently is 15.2.0 and uh, bundle node version is 16.5.0 okay now create a file and integration folder here you can uh, 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 in, uh, there are two ways here click on integration and in the top you can see here you can you can create a file .js file and either and you can see the folder uh, other hand you can click on write and create new file for example test google.js here i have created the file test google.js that is yes in integration folder okay now i need to write our first test first of all get the reference this type is equal to cypress so now i need to create a function for function we use it it and in the brackets write for example google testing and then mention the function 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 and then curly bracket start and close here in this function i need to visit the google site only so visit cy.vz cy dot as you can see intelligence is gaining potential visit what visit https no i will it will visit the website okay that is very much simple let's save it click on save all here you need to run the test runner npx cypress open when i will click on enter press enter it will open that test runner here you can see here you can see the test test google dot js now run it opening the chrome now 
it, it will simply visit the website and then we will transfer pass as you can see now it is using the uh, website our test should pass because correct address was given and you can see from the top you will see the status and time taken now it is completed test is completed you can see one has passed there is no failed test cases and it took 17.29 seconds which is huge time here you you can do auto disable scrolling here we can refresh if or if you do refresh then test will run again so test is running again here we have a selector playground we will we will use heavily on our coming sessions selector playground and you can see the browser website visit here you can even you can click it is open in the next tab so that was our first test and then in the next uh, section in the next sessions we will discuss about how we will use playground selector and we will get the elements till then bye hello everyone welcome to another session in this session we will discuss about the cyclist commands uh, cy dot visit is already discussed which visits given url and uh, then today we will uh, discuss type and, and some impress the enter so first of all i need to type something in google text field and then we will press the enter for this, I need to identify this uh, text field. Mm -hmm. Click on selector playground and click here. You can see its class name. This is class name. If hash is given, then this will be its ID. Now its class name, a, we can identify this element from its class name. Uh, I need to copy it and paste it in here in the code. See why that get that get element from its class name then type here uh, something like test automation by using that path. here click save and as soon as i clicked on save a test will run because test runner is already opened if test runner is not open then you can press npx I press open here you can see a uh, test automation by using Cypress is typed and test has passed there is no fail next I need to press enter for this I need to modify code here I'm in the curly bracket here right enter now save it and see the, what happens now code has started now it is running it has moved and now it is typing test automation by using cypress then it will press enter and result will be displayed as you can see result is displayed so you uh, till now we have discussed cypress that vision uh, cy dot get and uh, how we can press enter and uh, we hope can type something hello everyone today we will discuss about variables and i will show you how we can use variables in cypress so variable are just like boxes values are stored in it like integer true and false uh, string so for this we use let const and where so most recommended is you use let where we need 
to where we don't want to change the value so we use cost let me show you uh, let me go to Visual studio code here I will show you what code does this code only visits google.com so my plan is here just store some string in variable and type type in this field so let me declare the variable let some item here item variable name is item where we store the value test automation here so I need to get the name name of this field here click on selector playground click here in this field and see why dot get and paste here dot type of I will type this above value which is item and let's see save it and now you can see the results now it should type in that test text field yes it has typed test has passed so I have used let you can choose the where here so same result will be shown as you can see now value is stored in where 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 is use and value was stored in this was test automation which is now here you can see as I have told you that if we use const const keyword then we are not allowed to change the value later in this function for example item equal to some other text some other text here I've changed here initially this const had value test automation I want to change here so it should not allow save it now test is running you can see assignment to cost value variable is not allowed but we can here we want to change we can use where or let I have change here we use the bar as you can see the test is running again now it is typing so test has passed now I will use let here you can see I have used let so I can show you log cy dot log cy dot log log here you can see I want to display the value in log let me save it and see the result here you will see the change value is will be shown in log here you can see then log some other text is shown so here I want to click so you can see the result copy it and paste here dot type will press the enter and when the such Google search result will be shown as you can see the result is shown so if you have any question you can ask me thank you very much bye
hi everyone today we will sh look at how we will use the should should not exist for example if any field or object that object should not exist or should be visible if you want to verify that field is visible or not visible then we will write this code should not be visible should contain some text it will compare text and it will pass that if text is same if actual text is same as expected text then it will pass otherwise test will fail should have text some other text it will compare to text if the text are same then it will pass otherwise it will fail then we have it should be enabled it should be enabled if it is disabled then test test will fail it should be disabled if you want to verify that field should be disabled if it is enabled then our test will fail let me let me demonstrate you how we will do it here we have all test which visit to google.com in the google.com we have this field uh, this button google search let me get it here copy it and paste here you can see the property currently it is visible yes it is true it has text google search it has no focus and so on let me verify all these so here dot should should be dot here we have options should be focus I, I, if you if I click on it it is not focused by default so test will fail so here are other lot of options here should be frozen should be greater than should be hidden it is not hidden so test will fail you can see there are should be visible here here you can see the many options that should be visible so let's see save it and see the result now you can see the on the left side assert expected to be visible it has passed you can see our test case has passed so let me try other one should should be dot here we have option for example I want to verify that it is enabled it is enabled should not be enabled it is enabled so test will fail because it is saying it should not be enabled so here you will see here you can see the assert expected not to be enabled so it is expecting that it should not be enabled but it is in actually it is enabled so our test will fail you can see it is taking much longer time because default weight I have increased its wait time so let's wait here you can see test has failed here you can see assert so definitely it should fail so let me try another it should contain it should contain here it is containing google search yes it contains google search save it and see now it should pass because its text is google search 
so assert expected to contain Google search it has passed mm. you can see the shoot command is very useful you can verify many things so it should not be enabled you can see should not be case should not be enabled should not be extendable should not be false it should not be false as you can see there are many options you can verify as per your requirement here I want to show you it not should it not should not be enabled it is enabled so test case will fail should not be enabled here you will see what test case is running our assert expected not to be enabled so we are expecting that this button google search should not be enabled but it is enabled so in this case our test case will fail so wait few minutes and you will see fail test case as you can see our test case has failed here you can check here you can view stack trace so you ha I have shown you that should command is very useful if you have any question feel free to ask me I will be happy to answer thank you very much bye hello everyone today we will discuss how we can verify the page title and then I will discuss how we can do custom weights so for custom weight we can add cy dot weight and give can give the milliseconds so at the end I will show you how we can run the specific spec file from command line so syntax for this would be npx cypress run and spec then file name so this is agenda for today's discussion let me open the video studio code and as you can see this code only visits the google.com the next step I need to uh, verify the page title so now see why title this will get the title dot should you know the should equal the page title should equal to google here I need to type google so that's it now save it and it will run automatically now you can see our test case is running now you can see assert expected google to equal google you can see test case has passed so this will get the title will compare let me made some mistake here and you will see the result here I have removed e save it and now you will see our test case will will fail and uh, you can see in assert expected google to equal g double o g l e is missing so in this case it will fail so in this example uh, i showed you how you can verify the page title because it is very important to see whether page is open with correct title or not especially when we do the smoke test so it is taking little bit time let's wait and see as you can see now uh, title assert expected google to equal this one 
and assertion uh, assertion error is time moved is there is time out so the next step what was agenda custom weight okay let me show you how we can add the custom weight let me correct this google so let me show you how we can add it okay now add cy dot weight and give the millisecond for example i want to wait five second then give the five thousand millisecond then it will uh, get the title let's save it and see what happens now you can see our test is running and after uh, visiting it as yeah, you can see it is waiting it will wait five seconds then it will do a session so you can see the our test has passed thank you very much bye hello everyone today i want to discuss with you the random function math.random this function is very useful when you write the code that deals with ssn social security number priority or unique values where when test runs it requires unique value each time for example if priority is 1 it is added first time and second time test runs it requires another priority so if other priority is not given static priority is given for example 1 is given again then our test will fail similar is the case with SSN if one SSN is used so second time it will test our test will fail so we need to give a unique value so to overcome this problem we can use math.random function which generates the random random integers so let me show how we can do it let move to view studio code and you can see the code written let me show how what code this does let me refresh it <coughs> as you can see code is running this code moves to uh, sign up page google so it has type first name last name and username as you can see in this case text is written this username is not allowed try again so for example if i if i want if i write yonto 1234 and click on next button this it says this username is taken try another so in this case if i first time create a account with google with one username and second time it will say this username is taken so for this i need to concatenate the random function after John, John Doe. So let me show ho how we can do it. I move to Viewer Studio Code, and you can see here I have typed a username John Doe. So need to concatenate, concatenate the random function. For this, write plus function math dot random and so let me run it and you will see that after John Doe some random string is concatenated so as you can see here is as type something in this case when I click on next it is not uh, asking that username is taken so let me run it again this function random random string will will update as you can see the value has changed let me run third time as you can see value has changed so each time its values are changing so in this case we can overcome the problem 
by using random function so let me show you how we can run this test in console so for this I need to I need to type this our spec will run in console as you can see I has copied the path now wait until it runs hi everyone today we will discuss about object oriented programming in Cypress so Cypress sports classes and objects can be used so first of all I will create a class and then we'll add functions into that class in the third step we need to export that class so for you can use it in fourth step we need to import that class in other test so we can we can use functions so in step 5 we create a class object call in step 6 we will call the functions and we will run the main function and you, you should note that you cannot directly call the class class.js file you can create the object and we, you can call that class functions so let me show you how we will do it here you can see the earlier code which has some a function and here this code is written let me remove some code so now suppose I want to make this a class I remove that code and now class and I need to write the class name so demo demo class here is class so in the class I need to add the function wizard function can be wizard site here this is our function wizard site okay now I need to export that class so I can use it export default and class name is demo class so save it so let me create another class gs5 tc01 Class.js here. Let me keep the reference here. I need to import that class here so I can use it. Import class name demo class demo class from 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 here I need to give the path demo project okay next we have demo so I have imported successfully now I need to write a function it Okay. In 
that function I will create object of that class here object can be let suppose object is this and class name was demo class and demo class now no object created as start now call the its function this function was what was the function of that class wizard site and now use that function in our dry class ok save it save all you can see you cannot directly call this class so let me close it here I need to run this class tc01 now now it is opening the browser and it should run as uh, you can see test is running this class tc01 underscore drive class 1 so there is something wrong with this class constructor hmm. let me change here yes I have made a mistake write a new oh, his system is hanged wait 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 so here you can see I need to do new okay save it now the test case should pass now it will only do visit google.com it will test it should pass as you can see our test has passed so let me show you here I have told you that demo.js is our class so it is exported we have imported in dc01 underscore driver class dot js so if i want to directly run this demo dot js you will see it will not run let me show you uh, demo dot js you will see it will give error Here you can see demo.js. Now you can see no test forms because it was class. So thank you very much. Bye. hello everyone today I will show you how we can write to file and how we can read from file so for this I will use cy.write file and for reading cy.read file is used so let me show you how I can do it so open the Visual Studio code and here I need to create two functions first function for writing a second for reading here you can see the spec file name is rw.spec.js so create function it write to 
find function. So in this function, I will write a file. So file name can let me see why dot write file and give the name. So name should be like demo one file dot txt. So what will be text? Text should be I am QA here. A one text file should be created with name demo one file dot txt and contents should be I am QA. Let me save and see the results. Here you can see it has write to file. Uh, test has passed demo one file dot txt so move to your studio code and see here file demo one demo one file dot txt is created and text is i am qa so now I, I want to read from this file create another function read from file cy dot read read file so file name is demo one file dot txt yes that correct name and now dot should contains what should contain I am QA yes now run it and see what happens save it and see the results refresh it as you can see our asset expected IMQA to include IMQA as it was so our test or two tests as passed as you can see so in this way you can read to file and you can also write to file that's it from my side thank you very much bye hello everyone Today I will show you how we can use the fixtures. So first of all, what is the fixture? Fixtures are used to store and manage test data. During test data, during tests, we need test data. So fixtures are the files, JSON files, which are used to get test data in our tests. So fixtures file are located in Cypress fixture. By default, it is located there, but we can configure to another directory. The test data is usually written inside the JSON file, which can be used throughout your test. So let me show you how we can do it. Uh, move to View Studio Code and see. Let me show you how wo this code works here you can see I am refreshing it and it's usually visiting a website and enters the email and password and then logins in Visual Studio Code as you can see cy.wizard which visits this site and cy gets gets the email uh, and types the e email john at gmail.com and then in 
a password it types admin123 this is only for testing so it for uh, it gets um, button which is sign in which contains the text sign in and should be visible this is a third command and it clicks on it then it gets login as you can see here we have email and password so this email password this data user data should be in in uh, fixture folder so in fixture we created a json file with the name example.json here you can see i have entered the email and password so in this case we can enter any data here so this ca data can be used in our tests so let me show you how we can do it in demo fixture.json file first of all remove because we will get from uh, json file and this password so here after visit uh, visiting the website i need to cy dot fixture this is the fixture command here i need to give the name name of the fixture file example and then here I need to give the name suppose user here in this user copy paste this in fixture command here I need to get the email user dot email here I need to get the password from fixture file email and password so as you can see this code in this wizards function wizards the given URL and here it types email and password getting from uh, fix, uh, JSON file example.json file so save it and see what happens as you can see it has entered the email and password and clicked on sign in and it is successful and you can see the test is passed let me show it again as you can see clicked on sign in and test has passed so in this way in this way we can use json file so it is very useful and also be best practice to use it because wherever we need email password or any other data for our tests we can get it from this secondly uh, this is a re reusability point secondly if i want to change uh, for example if there is a, there is uh, there is a point when password is changed then we do not need to change in every json file every test case we only need to change in one file which is json file so this change will be reflected in, uh, in all our test cases this is the benefit okay thank you very much bye so let me show you how we can do it in first step you need to download the required npm packages so to download npm packages the command is npm install 
and these are packages you need these packages cypress dash mocha some need so cypress mocha some need to download cypress mocha some reporter j unit report merger so for merging the files and mocha j unit reporter for mocha files j unit so in cypress multi reporter these uh, these are the files which require so you know cypress multi reporter this package is used for configuring multiple reports in our case j unit reporter and html reporter and second one is mocha j unit reporter mocha j unit reporter generates j unit xml for each spec j unit report merger as you as names shows this is for merging the reports because individual reports are generated for each spec we need to merge we need to see the results combined since the mocha j unit reporter generates a j unit xml file for each spec we need to merge them all that at the end we need xml file so cypress mocha some reporter this package helps to generate html report in, in our case we have generated index.html <coughs> when you have downloaded i have already downloaded so i'm not going to download it again so you can uh, download uh, by clicking on terminal and typing this so so in the next step two we need to configure in cypress.json here you can see this code you need to copy paste this code for configuring let me show you here cypress.json here you can see uh, all the dependencies are listed here reporter cypress dash multi dash reporter and here you can see a uh, report directory cypress slash reports so our reports will be in reports folder under cypress cypress is a main and when we here will be reports here you can see reports will be here this folder uh, here you can see j unit reports here e this one is an index html xml file so embedded signature are true html true json true in line as are true and here you can see the mocha files this is the part cypress reports in the reports folder we have these as you can see so video in this case i have done false you can do it true to see the videos so this was our step two now let move towards the step three in the step three configure plugin index.js file so open cypress folder open plugin folder and open index.js file here you can see the plugin here this one let me close the others this one this one code so this you need to copy this code this code there so this is all code written in the step 4 add an entry into support slash index.js file so this index file is under support folder so you need to copy here you can see this folder is here this is index this is another index file this is different or this is different so you need to import this import uh, cypress mocha some reporter register so when we have done we have done step 4 now we need to run our test to see the results run your test npx cypress run 
here you can see the command so in specs I want to run only demo.js file but there are so many I don't, don't want to run because it will take much more time so I only need to run this so I can show you the results copy it in here in the command run it now it will run as you will see it will d delete earlier reports and it will create new ones it will refresh it and a res new result will be displayed in the report so uh, it is executing it will take little bit time so at the end I will show you HTML file this will be in index uh, reports index.html you can use this xml file when you integrate with ci cd pipeline Conti when you do continuous integration continue deployment whether it is azure devops or any other tools you need uh, xml files so xml files are important because you graphs will be shown there and uh, index.html file here you can see visually visualize you can visualize the results locally so let's wait as you can see our uh, demo.js uh, file is running what this test case is running you can see in Cypress 8.7.0 uh, browser is Electron 93 headless and you can see here, here earlier there was a folder reports which is which was removed a new folder now again new folder is generated and you can see the new JSON file mocassum dot JSON files are generated JUnit reports here you can see new report is generated and index.html file is generated so let me show you index.html file so you can visualize the result here this is the path sorry this was the test case here you can see you can see the result one test case has passed demo test and it took 5.9 seconds okay thank you very much bye hello everyone today we will discuss about Cypress dashboard the Cypress dashboard service in a, is an optional web based companion to the test tender so it provides timely, simple and powerful insight on all your tests done at a glance. With automatic parallelization and load balancing, you can optimize CI and run significantly faster tests. If you visit uh, for the pricing page and you can see more details. But before that, let me show you uh, how uh, when we run the test how it looks like here you can see this is the dashboard and if you run the test in in this way it will look like first page and then we click on particular test run you can see the details how many tests have passed how much has failed and uh, what was the reason so so in this case if you want to configure with your project you need to do in three steps first step is register with dashboard dashboard.cypress.io there is a website you where you can get the project id and key so project id and key will be unique for your project will be, will be used for configuring in step two enter that project id in Cypress JSON file and this will be in this way in step 3 run the test cases from terminal so for terminal command would be npx cypress run dash dash record dash dash key and that key will be given this is example key 
so let me show you how we can do it here you can see there is a pricing page separate dashboard pricing page as you can see separate dashboard pricing ship better code faster when you add the separate dashboard to our open source test runner scale your test runs debug failure faster and manage your tests with ease here you can see their plan free plan is free in free plan uh, three users users three are free and test runs are 500 as you can sign up for free and teams plan starting at 75 dollar per month users maximum users are 10 test results are 10,000 included in business plan they starts with 300,000 per month users uh, maximum users are allowed 40 test results are 10,000 and in their enterprise users unlimited and test results variable so in free plan what you get parallelization load balancing view run failures analytics integration provides with slack github gitlab bitbucket and there is community support also so as you can see the more detail so, uh, in our case i have used the free plan Mm. let me show you here you can see when you visit you will get welcome to Cypress you give username and password what is your job responsibilities job responsibilities are manage quality write test cases so on you can write anyone click on continue and it will give the next page organization on um, a dummy demo organization website you can give a I'm giving the dummy data not actual organization names you can give the actual name create organization so organization will be created in your teams skip this now you can invite your team members in so let's go as you can see create new project project name demo next step project name successfully created as you can see you can get here here you can write on write on your first run to record your first run complete these two steps in step one insert the project id into your cypress.json file this project id we have given this project id the your unique project id allows to connect your project to the organization insert the key below to your cypress.json file to get started in step 2 run the suppress while passing the record key here i have already told in this command you need to run from command line so test will be run uh, this was the overview about uh, suppress dashboard thank you very much bye hello everyone welcome in this session we will discuss and we will wrap up what we have learned till now this course was all about test automation by using cypress so uh, i have told you how to code in cypress in, in introductory sessions we have discussed why we need automation why we need to automate automation test pyramid testing coordinates and so on as you know there are many reasons for automations manual testing takes too long manual testing it takes too much time because it is done by humans and if there are a few resources and work is huge 
with especially if there are a repetitive task then it takes too much time and secondly if there, there is too much time uh, our rescue resources are our burden then it is possibility that they they will make mistakes so our test automation reduces error prone testing tasks and thirdly it frees up and um, frees up time to do best work when our resources are free they they are given the chance for uh, creative activities they are given a chance to try up the new things then they will give best they will give their best output and uh, you know automation is a safety net when we don't do not have automation in our company then our developers see QA as a safety net if our automations are there then they provide safety because they can catch things very quickly and early before our client finds and it also provides feedback early and often as they run on the same way which we have did coding and they run often and though in, in today's world we have sprints two to four weeks and we need to run we need to check whether our uh, code was correctly moved or not if there is any issue there are any conflicts we can run smoke test regression test we can find the issues early early test example that drive coding can do more you know in we when we write that in we have test driven development we write the test and we write the code to see to so to see that our test should be passed so we write the test before writing the code so this is a different approach in this approach our perspective should be that our we, we are writing quality codes so our perspective is shifted from write, simply writing a code towards writing the quality code tests are documentations live documentations you know the test provides live documentations they it is difficult is it hard to update the static documentation so we need to update the tests if there is any issue so this gives the uh, real picture of our current application test provides return on investment they provides best return over investment why have discussed the reasons there are some issues drawbacks obstacles which we look when we do our test automation work first one is attitude why should we automate especially this is a question related to developers developers usually ask why we should automate ua level test this is a responsibility of quality assurance personnel so other one is humpa pain because initially lot of effort a lot of learning is required uh, especially our resources are not trained on, on test automation we need trainings so there is much more investment involved initially initial investment in terms of time money effort uh, especially it is difficult to uh, write the stable test cases automated test cases if the code is not stable so if the code is in flux and code is changing rapidly then we cannot write the tests stable tests on it so writing the stable tests we need a stable code so another one is uh, a legacy code if we have legacy code and it is difficult to automate because the legacy code is not written keeping in mind the detachability then it will be hard to write the tests another factor is fear people fear because automation is not easy work this is not sexy work to to do it people fear especially if there is possibility that your resources are not capable or they have not coding skills they cannot automate so to, so so they fear doing this effort and they will come they will go to their old habit their manual testing though if this is the obstacle 
we need to overcome this we can overcome by changing culture by doing adopting a scrum methodologies by doing agile in team so whole team working on a project can overcome these problems and you know test automation effort is not only the responsibility of quality assurance personnel it is responsibility of the whole team whole team working on the project so in the test pyramid we have in the right hand side you can see automated unit test uh, then we after unit test we have uh, acceptance test integration test api level tests and then we move towards end to end tests and ui test if we automate most of the our tests at unit level then suppose we have automated 70 percent at unit level we have only left with 20 percent at api level integration level and then we have left 10 percent only for uh, end to end testing or ui testing if this approach is best approach we should adopt this uh, test uh, automation test pyramid on the other hand currently most of companies unfortunately are following inverted pyramid in this way they write few at unit level tests and and suppose they have write 10 percent at unit level tests and 20 percent at integration test and they are now 70 percent required to write end-to-end -end test so there will be huge uh, huge work at the end manual huge manual checking and huge test automation work is required so this approach is unfortunately creates problem and uh, creates delay and project gets late out of budget out of time so we should avoid this inverted test pyramid mm, so when we talk about testing quadrant we divide in four quadrants quadrant one is about unit test component tests in this uh, quadrant uh, we do automation unit level automations usually developers w w does that because they write the code they write the unit level test these uh, technology facing this uh, quadrant is technology facing quadrant in uh, quadrant 2 we have functional tests story tests prototype simulations so in this quadrant both manual and uh, automation testing is used so uh, you know cypress mm -hmm. i we only deal in this quadrant we only work on this quadrant by using cypress in ui level test these are in this we have business facing these are business facing tests and in quadrant uh, three you know exploratory testing and user based testing cannot be done by using automation so these are done by manual so in this quadrant we do manual testing uh, user acceptance testing alpha and beta testing is done in this quadrant uh, this quadrant is basically business facing and in fourth quadrant we we do testing by using tools and we do performance load testing security testing and this this is also technology facing quadrant so this was little about little bit about testing quadrants now let's discuss about cypress in cypress i have shown you that um, this automation tool uses javascript and it is open source in the, their website is cypress.io cypress have some feature mm, it provides time travel it takes screenshot of the application uh, as your, your test runs it provides deg debuggability readable errors and stack traces provides atomic weights automatically weights uh, for four seconds you can do custom weights by writing the code it provides consistent results so because uh, it do not use selenium or web driver it is fast consistent and reliable so it, it takes screenshot and video uh, when our test is running and uh, it cross browser testing locally or remotely in remotely we can use ci cd continuous integration and continuous deployment and then we can do uh, remote testing 
in Cypress we can use end-to-end -end testing integration testing and unit level testing so in Cypress project setup I have shown you all these steps in my tutorials in new step one you need to install node.js and because we need JavaScript for coding so in steps two, we need to install Visual Studio code uh, and in step 3 we we need to create a folder and then uh, for our Cypress project and then we need to open that in our uh, Visual Studio code and uh, we need to run the command which I've given here in the last step we need to install the Cypress and now in this way we can we can go through when we talk about JavaScript uh, JavaScript completes its ninth year in row as the most commonly used programming language for most developer programming is web programming is their first programming is JavaScript and in uh, you know in uh, stack overflow and in their survey uh, JavaScript is the top and third one is Python uh, Python is most popular as you can see uh, screen here you can see the image JavaScript 64% HTML CSS 56% Python Python is 48.24% and you can see so JavaScript is as top oh, Node.js we can install Node.js and then from in by using this website uh, for code editor we need to install Visual Studio Code which can be downloaded so in our first test I have shown you that how to write the first test we need to create a file under Cypress integration folder and the top we need to give the reference type is equal to Cypress and we need to write the test then we can run by using NPS Cypress open NPS Cypress open will open the test runner and we can run the our test from there and I have already uh, shown you how we can use the cy.visit command which visits the given URL and how we can use the cy.get which gets the element mm, and, and the type command when we need to type something in drop down or or any control then we need to do cy dot or type this types anything in the command then we have discussed about variables mm, in variables we use the let const and where we have discussed in detail when to use const when to use let and when to use where const is used when we do not want to change the value during our test so most recommended is used to let Mm, and where is also used for variable as you can see variables are just like boxes and in, in which we can uh, store our data this data can be string uh, integers and true and false so on then we have discussed about dart should dart should command actually compares for example dart should not exist mean this element should not exist if it exists then our test will fail dart should be visible this means this button or element should be visible if this is not visible then our test will fail so dart should be not visible mean this element should not be visible if this is visible then our test will fail dart should contain some text if you want to verify that our uh, control or button text is sign in then the dart should contain we can give the sign in text then it will compare that it is containing sign in or not if it not text is not sign in then it will fail dart should have text some text then we need to verify that this text is present and or not then we can write the command dart should have text some text for example there is types google if there is a text is google then test will pass otherwise it will fail dart should be enabled if we want to see that our control is enabled or not then we can write dart dart should be enabled if control is disabled then our test will fail then our assert command will fail dart should be disabled this means our control should be disabled if we enable 
then assert command fill fill we need to sometimes we need to check the page or open contains this this title so we need to verify for this we can write the command cy dot title dot should eq then title for example if you want to uh, uh, i want to verify that i have visited google.com and google uh, page title is google then i uh, i want to verify that page title is google then i can write the command cy dot title should equal uh, then we can write the google then it will a set command will verify that it is contain title is containing google or not if it not containing then it will fail we need to wait cust uh, we can need to do custom waits because by default this provides four seconds sometimes our application is slow sometimes it takes too much time for drop down to load so we need to add the custom weight for this we can use the command cy dot weight and we can give the mm, value in millisecond for example if i want to wait for five seconds then i can write cy dot weight 5000 then it will wait five seconds then it next code will run and uh, here i want to sh uh, tell you that n n y npx cypress run spec and in this way we can run th uh, run the run on terminal that specific uh, spec file if that specific js file we run only we if, we if we do not give this path then all the test cases in the project will run for example if we internally we write npx cypress run then all test cases will run if we want to run the selected test cases then we can use npx cypress run spec and given that test cases if there are multiple then we can use comma and then next path can be given then we have discussed how we can use the random number because it is required in SSN field, priority fields and unique values when whenever test runs it requires unique value each time. So in this case we need to use math.random and in math.random you can gain the value. Then it will gi give uh, give the random value then we can use in SSN priority field. And this way is, uh, this is the most suitable way. You can uh, I have shown you that object oriented programming in cypress is required we can get the benefit of object oriented programming in the tutorial i have shown you how we can create the class we can add the functions we can then we need to export that class so we can use it in our test case so yeah we we have uh, then we by what uh, when we you need to use that class we need to create a object for that class and call the functions this was note if our class is dot js file which is class we cannot directly run it we need to run the js file which calls that class so data in data driven testing we have files fixtures so our test data require our tests requires test data with test data can be provided from file dot uh, from csv file uh, from text file so we can use the fixture fixtures are json json file we can store the data we can uh, retrieve data from there so i have shown you that uh, we can write the cy dot write file this will write the file and we want to read from file we can use the command cy dot read file this will read from file then we have discussed how we can use the fixture fixtures are used to store and manage test data so in fixture in fixture folder if you you will explore the project you can see fixture folder are located in cypress fixture and by default these are there by if we but we can configure in to another directory also so test data is usually written inside the json file which can be used throughout your test so it is convenient it provides reusability because here we have commonplace 
if you have anything changes for example password changes then we need to change on one place we do not need to change it all do not need to update or change all the test cases so this was a little bit about fixture we have uh, also shown you Cypress dashboard mm, how we can run our tests and see results on dashboard so dashboard service is not free uh, it uh, is free only for three uh, users and 500 tests per month if then uh, this free package Cypress dashboard is optional web-based companion to test standard it provides timely simple and powerful insight on all your tests and at a glance so Cypress provides automatic parallelization and load balancing you can optimize CI and run significantly test uh, faster tests so if in pricing in cypress.io slash pricing you can see their pricing in more detail here I've shown the cypress dashboard which I have uh, run here you can see uh, cypress dashboard looks like this and you can do uh, configure the cypress dashboard uh, for configuring you requires uh, these steps first of all you need to register with dashboard the so website is dashboard uh, dot uh, cypress dot io uh, you can get the id and key because id project id and key is very uh, important for configuring you will configure your project with cypress <coughs> so you can need to enter the project id mm, in cypress star json file here you can see the in, in this is the format uh, so you need to run the test from terminal npa cypress run dash dash record dash dash key and key given key key, key, key will be given in this way so the next we have discussed about reports in uh, cypress so cypress uh, supports reports and reports can be generated html xml files and you can view html reports so there are um, steps which I have shown you uh, you need to download the required npm packages you need to run this command npm install cypress mocha some reporter junit reporter merger uh, for merging the files so multi reporter mocha and I have shown you uh, the reasons why we need these mm, uh, libraries npm packages so in steps you need to configure in cypress or json and in step 2 we need to configure it in step two or 3 we need to configure index or json file and here you can see this code need to require this code should be there add entry into support slash index json file so in this fourth step we need to add entry to index.json file index.json file we should import cypress mocha some reporter slash register in the fifth step we need to run tests so cypress uh, npx cypress run and spec specific file can be run we can view html files uh, in reports index.html in our case we name it index.html you can use uh, XML files when you integrate with CI continuous integration continuous uh, deployment Jenkins Azure DevOps or any other tools thank you very much this was all about we, what we have learned at the end I have given you two quizzes about uh, Cypress please complete them and provide your feedback thank you very much bye